What's happening, everybody? So I was just going over the video that I uploaded of the... Part one of that air raid intake tube, and I found that I had screwed something up in the video, and apparently this video is haunted or something, and I'm leaving this take live because... I, why not? That just seems to be how this video is going anyway. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to bring you guys some of the content that I was going over with that first video of the footage that basically just got lost. So I want to show you guys what came in the box in terms of just instructions and dyno charts that the, that uh, Air Raid provided and also show you a little bit of the thought process that I had as far as why I thought this was going to be a better fit for the DT Ram in terms of performance. So let's get into that. Okay guys, so here are the instructions to that kit. There's the part number. This is part of the instructions that do come with that kit as you can see pretty fairly well detailed. They let you know which parts are factory that you're keeping and what you're replacing. Also included is this handy dyno chart. I found it curious that they did not quote peak numbers, but in essence what I would argue is really more like an average number in terms of gains with this kit. See if that shows up. They're quoting 10 horsepower there, but there's obviously a bigger jump out a little bit further in the RPM range. Same goes with the torque. Now this is one area where I really do need to give Air Raid credit. I think they actually undersold this kit and it's one of the reasons why, unfortunately, at least at the time of this video, that kit has been discontinued in favor of other fancier, uh, more expensive kits that they could have produced. I really honestly think that they undersold the power gains on this kit and that might have hurt the sales and I can at least attest to that through my own testing. Remember that the truck went a 1454 and a 1455 in the quarter mile with the stock tube with the stock filters. Replaced just the tube alone and left the stock filters in place and the truck went back to back 14.50. That's half a tenth, which is about half a truck length. But with their filter, their K&N style filter, if you will, talking about the air raid filter that is the oiled variety, not the dry, the truck went a best of a 1442 and a 1438. Basically, if you take the worst case scenario from stock, 1455, and compare that to a 1438, it's almost two tenths of a second. I mean, that is a vast difference from A to B when you're talking about just a cold air kit. It caught me off guard, to be honest with you. And even if you started to break down just the averages, it's still over a full tenth. That's pretty impressive for a product that only utilizes a tube and a filter and the rest is all just stock parts. And by the way, the data that I collected backs up not only the quarter mile times, but some of the claims that they were talking about on this dyno chart. So let me get back to the comparison between the tubes. I want to show you guys the DT versus the DS RAM intake tubes a little bit closer up so you can get an idea for why this is maybe a good performance option. And a real shame that they discontinued the kit. Okay guys, so right now we're looking at a DS RAM. And what we're looking at is that intake track. DS Rams Airbox, the snorkel is a fender well pickup, and it's a pretty big snorkel at that. But check out how that intake tube makes the rise and then drops straight down on top of that throttle body. Now compare that to a DT Ram style setup. Notice that it just basically terminates with what you could argue is just a 90 degree dump right on top of the throttle body. This area being somewhat maybe shrouded, Kind of hard to tell. That would maybe come into play at higher loads, higher RPM loads, but absolutely smooth transition on this DS RAM. Something else I wanted to point out. All right, we'll just do it like that. Notice how it's got a little bit of a kick in it. Not sure that that affects anything, but let's take a look at something else and just see if that would possibly add to a loss in performance at higher RPM. See, here's the thing. 
notice how the throttle body sits straight up on these Ram trucks. It's not directly attached to a plenum. So how does it get air into the plenum if it seems like you've got this throttle body just kind of floating in midair? Okay, so without disassembling the whole top side of that, let me just tell you that what Dodge did is they put that throttle body, in essence, on a tongue, uh, like a peninsula sticking straight up with a 90 degree turn going straight into a large common plenum. Now, that's not necessarily a flow restriction at lower RPM and lower total airflow demands. But once you start spinning these things up to some decent RPM, that can maybe become part of a restriction. Again, not the entire story, but just part of it. Now, if you couple that with a tube that also creates its own 90 degree, then in essence, you've got air that has to travel two different 90 degree turns before it makes it into the common plenum. And that can restrict flow, again, at the higher RPM and higher airflow demands. What the DS and what this air raid tube do is they reduce a radius that would, or rather they increase a radius that would normally be possibly a restriction and make it a smooth transition into the throttle body to where you're only having to deal with one 90 degree turn. That's a smart way to go about this if packaging is requiring you to put this throttle body in such a weird place. So this in essence wraps up that video uh, or part of the video that got lost, if you will. Uh, but I wanted to explain some of the why behind the thought process of moving to this type of a tube uh, to go along with the stock box. Now, the reason why this kit was so attractive to me was it offers me an option that I don't have with other cold air kits. And that is that I can still use my stock paper filter if I want to. Here's the other part of this. In testing, the stock filters did just about as well as running that k &N style reusable filter from Air Raid. But the reality is that I know through my own testing that those filters don't filter air quite as well. So with the removal of that charcoal filter, which I'm assuming is a bit of a restriction in its own right, and just running that paper filter, I have a feeling that I can collect all of the filtering benefits of a stock filter with the performance that I get from the tube as well. So I get to have options there. And by the way, remember that in testing, it was not that far off, but it was still far off enough to where I'm leaving that K and install filter in there for now. So with that guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Y'all have a great one. We'll see you on the next one. Adios.